Hey guys and welcome to Little Black Book. You already know what time it is. Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you lean? Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, as the title says, we are here talking to you guys about the sexy Christian. And what we're talking about really is what makes somebody attractive as a Christian. Um, and we're talking about... Uh, things that pertain to attractiveness so whether you're Christian or not actually you can learn from the principles because the principle is still the same whether you're Christian or not but this is more specifically guided to my fellow brethren in Christ all right cool so let's get into the video you know what? I've named it um, the running man um, and basically what that means is running with what God has called you to do um, the premise of somebody who's attractive in Christianity is running with what God has called you to do and I want to go back to the very beginning i want to go back to genesis we seem to talk about this one all the time but that's where all my relationship stuff seems to start so um if you look at adam god created adam in genesis 1 but he formed adam in genesis 2 so he created man because he said let us make man in our own image to create you brought into existence but then he formed man which means he took, he took the shape of man in genesis 2 and when he did that what he also did was he already had created the garden for man to exist in that means god's already created your environment the resources that you need he's created everything um, for you to live happily in but what he's asking for you to do is be a steward so what God asked Adam to do was tend to the garden because the resources that he had at hand were already there. The information and knowledge that he had was within. So God has given, that, given him the wisdom already. I'm not saying that you already have all the wisdom. There is knowledge. The Bible says lack of knowledge by people perish. So there is a knowledge acquiring that we need to do because the difference between Adam and us is that we are, we're in a fallen state. Whereas Adam was in a knowing state because he had a relationship with God. And therefore, when it came to the name of the animals, he could name them. Do you understand? Cool. So we, we don't compare ourselves directly, correlating ourselves to Adam, but I'm just kind of giving you a principle. So where Adam was concerned, God put him into an environment and said, listen, look after this environment. This is, you're a steward of this. And I want to let you know that what you're meant to be running with, you are only a steward of. There's a reason why you like what you like. There's a reason why you see things the way you see things. There's a reason why certain things are, uh, there's certain things that make sense to you that doesn't make sense to other people. So for instance, for me, I love YouTube, right? I love YouTube because I love presenting, I love doing hosting, I love being in front of the camera, I love talking, I love being the conversation with people. But did I put that in me? No, I was already given that. So therefore the resources that I am to, to be who I need to be have already been put inside of me. That's what's going to create my attractiveness to other people. Because people want to see that light that's inside of you shine. Yeah? And so what God has put inside of you, that's why the Bible says, your gifts and talents will make way before kings and queens, right? Because it's what's in you already. A gift and a talent are embedded into you. You don't acquire them. They are embedded into you. This is what we call grace. I didn't ask for it. I was given it. Do you understand? And I'm simply going to use what I have to work. So what Adam was given was the ability to look after the garden. He was a steward of the garden. So you are a steward of your talent. I am a steward of this YouTube. I don't own the YouTube. I don't own this vision. God has given me a vision and all I'm doing is what I'm doing is stewarding the vision. I'm making sure that I complete what I need to complete on my end, which is to look after the vision and make sure I get to the final destination. Having said that, let's get into what we're talking about because this is about attractiveness, right? Yeah, cool. So I have this um, particular quote, which I say is, when water runs, it remains fresh, but the moment water stands still, it begins to mold our guy and etc etc i used to have a friend back in the day who was very much involved in kickboxing and this is where i formed this quote from it's about six seven years ago and this guy was always getting all the girls yeah but he's shorter than me and skinnier than me yeah um light skin though so maybe that's it i don't know but i noticed one thing about him one thing that was about him he's always on the move and when i say he's always on the move i mean he's always progressive in the thinking progressive in work and prog progressive in achievements. So if it wasn't kickboxing he's doing, he's involved in some type of business. Not only is he involved in some type of business, he's always learning something about business. So, and then, so when you, when you see him, it's either kickboxing, business, how to make money, um, about, he was sick at education too. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Very adept at talking. So whenever you saw him, there was something new going on with him. It was never stale. So when I, if I was to see him now, if I see him now, I know he's changed already because of the way his nature was. Consistently progressing, yeah? He's consistently running at that case. You know, and in, in, in um, is it, uh, we're gonna call it biology of plants? 
um, or even human beings, anything that grows, anything that's, anything that's alive, one of the functions has to be that it moves, right? It has to grow and has to move. And so you to be an, a, an attractive Christian, there should be growth and there should be movement. When I see you today and I see you next week, where's the growth and the movement? And a lot of our growth and our movement comes from revelation. Revelation from who? God. So um, for, for me instantly, for instance, if you saw me today, I told you, God is good. You know what? God told me about, I was reading the word, I was reading the word and this is what came to me. The next week I come to you and I say, you know what? I read that same passage and I got the same revelation again. You'd be like, what? Fam, this guy's always stale. And this is why sometimes certain preachers, when I listen to them, I'm just bored. It's like, you don't move with re revelation. There is no progression. Do you understand? You're still in the same place. That's why you don't like certain lecturers. Because all they do is read off the slide. There is no revelation. There's no progression from that. But I'm not focusing just on that. I'm focusing on the fact that there, is pro there, is, there should be a movement in you. And when there's a movement, when there's, when there's a, a forward kind of step, people become attracted to you. Because you're starting to move forward. Do you get me? And when water begins to run, it begins to be able to lift boulders, lift stones in the water. It begins to, to pick up and deposit, pick up and deposit, pick up and deposit. Because a lack of knowledge, my people perish. This is going to make you attractive. So let's get into my points. My analogy for here, we're talking about the running man, is this. When you see somebody, yeah, running past you, whether it's jogging, whether it's they're running to the bus or whatever, what is your initial thoughts? When you see someone running past you, scurrying past you, sprinting past you, what is your initial thoughts? I mean, the first one I always think of is, where are you going? And the where are you going creates a wonder about your story. If where are you going, okay, what's this, what's this person's story? Yeah, what is it about them? Do you know what I'm saying? And when I adapt that into being, we're talking about attraction. When somebody is consistently running in terms of their vision that God has given them, because what you're running in is running in the vision God has given you. When you're running in that vision, that idea that God has given you, the, the mandate that God has given you, the ministry that God has given you, yeah, the purpose, the why God has given you, yeah, then what happens is um, people will ask, what's this guy's story? You know, like if you see T.G. Jakes now, you ask, what is his story? Because he's running with his vision. Do you see what I'm saying? When we see you saying Bolt, he's not necessarily running literally past me. But when we see him running on the track, we ask the question, what is your saying story? Outside of the track, who is this guy? Because obviously he we see the, mag the madness he's doing, the achievements that he's creating. But who is this guy? So one of the first questions you ask is, where are you going? You know, like what are you, you you're running with a vision, but where are you going? That creates that question in somebody's mind, that creates the intrigue, the mystery to want to get to know you, that creates a level of attractiveness. Number two, why are you in a hurry? I mean, what are you trying to achieve and what are you trying to get? You see, so when you're running with your vision, your goal, for instance, I'm doing this YouTube, and I'm, I'm, pu I'm putting up videos five or six each week, trying to put five or, six, uh, five or six each week, it's the equivalent of me running past you in a hurry, and someone's asking me, what are you trying to achieve? Now, I'm going to tie this in, this is going to be another video I'm going to talk about, which is your why. It's very important to understand your why, why you do what you do. But what am I trying to achieve? Well, what I'm trying to achieve is trying to run in what God has called me to do. And I want to reach other Christians. I want to, I want to achieve the mandate, which is the reconciliation of man to God. I want you to see that my, tip, my gift and my talent is not my own, but it's, I'm only refining what God has already placed in me to be able to reach lost souls with Jesus Christ. Now, how I do that may be different to everybody else. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Do you get me? But when I'm, in, when, when I'm putting out five or six videos and I'm doing consistency, my YouTube is growing, someone's going to see that and ask, what, like, what, what, this guy's running, like, why is he in a hurry? You know, because time waits for no man also. And because you, because you understand, you see, when you're running in your vision, you begin to understand that time waits for nobody. And you need to do this. You can't procrastinate. Do you know what I'm saying? I've been doing this YouTube for three years, right? And only the last November, I've been doing it for four years. Only in November did I see a first paycheck come. Only in November did I start to see a, gr a, a growth in, a growth in, um, a growth in, 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 in the audience, yeah? Secondly to that, um, it's interesting because I was praying about the YouTube. I'm saying, God, look, I've been doing this for three years. What's going on? If a man, man's not growing the way I see people growing. And it's like, it was at that point, after being consistent with my YouTube for three years, that God said, listen, 
I just heard him say, look, you're a commentator. And I was like, what? So I said, okay, let me put a video out. And I commentated on the video and it blew. And from there, I know, I, I've said, that's it. That's my lane. I know my lane is to, is to commentate. But in that commentating, because Christ has embedded his word in me, is, and my DNA is Christ. What am I trying to achieve? In that commentating, Christ must still reign. Do you get me? It's not about me trying to blow up as a YouTube star, but it's about still Christ must reign. So when you can see me running past you in a hurry and you're asking, what is this guy trying to achieve? Where is he trying? What is it? What's the destination? Well, you know what I'm saying? That creates an intrigue, that creates a mystery, that creates an attractiveness. So when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you're running and you're running in a hurry and you realize time is waste for no man. And this is my main point about time. I kind of went round and skirted it, but the main point about running in a hurry is that because you understand, someone who's in a hurry will understand time. Whether they're late or not, they understand that time is pressing against them. And so the way they move, they move with fire. So when you meet somebody and they say, listen, look, bro, I don't like wasting time, you know. Like today, let's do what we need to do. On point, all the time, on time, on time. Okay, look, I wanna do this, I wanna do this. I've got to schedule it because I need to make sure I've got enough time to do this. That person becomes attractive because you now know this person doesn't like wasting time. They're not a procrastinator. Anything you ask them to do, they'll be on it. You understand? That in itself is attractive to people. Oh, I'm telling you, man, damn, I'm dropping these diamonds, baby. Are you mad? Are you mad? You're lean. Get it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, man. You know what I'm saying? If you feel what I'm saying, Listen, make sure you comment down below, let us know your thoughts. If you disagree, comment down below too. But make sure you put leave a thumbs up for us. Anyway, cool. Number three. Someone who's running past you, you might if someone's running past you, you might think, as I said before actually, who are you? And now who are you? It, it builds up, I want to know you. So the first one was about I want to know your story. The second one was about obviously understanding that some this person obviously um, understands time and wants to do things in a, in a short space of time. And the third one really is about actually getting to know them. So not the story, but who are you? That, so the first was story, the second one is obviously time, but the third one is now, who are you? So yeah, you want to ask that question, um, who are you? Um, and that's that creates the intrigue to pull somebody in, not just to read about you, not just to kind of ask other people about you, but actually for them to want to come to directly to you and ask who are you you know sometimes we can find out someone's story by reading the pages of, of a book yeah so i can read about you saying bolt but if i if the intrigue to want to actually meet you i want to actually get to know you do you know what i'm saying if you're a runner yeah most of us don't really like running why because it's painful it hurts and you're going to do it all over again yeah but we love the effects of what it does yeah, the pain versus the reward, the reward outweighs the pain. Okay, and so, you know, for a lot of us who run, the sweat, the pain, everything like that is overcome by the reason why we're doing it. You as a person, obviously, who's running, so let's say me, I'm running, yeah? Um, there's a couple things that you want to understand as to why you're running. When you get to understanding of why you're running, then you'll be able to, that, that, uh, that, because people want, people, people are attracted to people who are clued, who know why they do what they do, okay? So, let me put this thing, the reason why we run is that I've got a destination, number one, I've got a destination. I've got a goal in mind, I've got a vision in mind, I've got an end place in mind, whether it's short term, long term. And because of that, I'm running there. And because I've got my eyes set on that goal, and because I've got my vision in check, as I'm running, you're looking at me running. Do you get me? It's like in the middle of the street. Say some people are walking and I start running. People will start looking at the person who's running. So instantly I've created an attraction. I've caused eyes to look at me because I'm doing something that other people are not doing. Do you get me? Because I'm doing something that other people are not doing. And so the quicker somebody runs, yeah, the more eyes will turn. Because even if a hundred people are running, but if there was one person who's sprinting past everybody else, like you're saying does, we focus on who? The person who's sprinting the hardest. So the harder you're working, and when I say hardest, I mean working in the, in the term of grace. So the Bible says that um, uh, through grace, um, no, the Bible says uh, by grace, I am what I am. But I worked harder than all of them. So what, this is what Paul was saying. So even though by the grace I've been given these talents and gifts, I'm working hard to make sure that I refine and make sure that I produce a product that's of excellence. Do you get me like Daniel? So that when I'm running, it's like I'm running at speed. 
you get me? Quality is always over quantity. Anyway, second point is this. The reason why I run is that um, I've got a why, and that why overcomes a pain barrier. You see, running ain't easy. Running ain't really fun either. I mean, when you take, like, for instance, I like football. I don't mind the running as much because I'm running to the ball or I'm tackling somebody. You can see there's something that's a stimulus that's drawing me into the running. But when you're just running on road, yeah, it can be painful, hard, long, even though you've got a goal in mind. Do you know what I'm saying? And so there has to be a why. Why are you, why are you running? Once you've got that why, you will begin to run. Number three, um, your objective for running must also be in alignment with God. So the, the why, as in why you're running, must also be in alignment with God. The Bible says that uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that running that you're doing, it should be done by faith. Is that the Bible talks about how we run and we should take off all the things that are gonna wear us down. It is done by faith. So the vision that you've got, this YouTube that I've got, I've got a vision for it. I've got a vision that God has given me, but I'm running it by faith. You understand? Cool. Number five is, um, as you're running, you know, you see different routes. Today I was cycling, yeah, and I took another route and I was like, oh man, this is long. And I started complaining and saying, God, this is long. But then it reminded me of what I was going to talk about today, which is the fact that you running can take you onto different routes. Do you know what I'm saying? And you can see different sites. What does that mean? It means you can t take in different experiences. It means you can take in different environments. You can take in different flavors, different tastes, and then begin to use that as part of obviously your vision and use that as part of your, so I should even say your gifts and your talents. You can use that to actually refine those gifts and talents. And when you begin to speak to other people, literally about your experiences and what you've seen, etc., etc., people will relate to you and people will find you attractive because not only are you talking about just God, but the way you're able to manifest God in a relatable way. For instance, I play football. Can I introduce God into football? Yes, I can. I can. I, I've just done a video recently called MOC, which is talking about sportsmen and God. I can give you an analogy about how in football you should pass the ball. What does that mean? It means there has to be teamwork. Even in Christianity, there must be teamwork. You saw Paul and you saw Peter. There was teamwork. You saw um, Paul, Paul and Barnabas. There was teamwork. You saw Paul and Timothy. There was teamwork. Yeah, sometimes I've got to pass the workload over to somebody else and say, listen, I've planted here. Can you water? Yeah, um, you know what I'm saying? So there, there is ways to be able to, to be relatable to different people. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me talk about that. Um, also, what running does, it, it instills a form of discipline. When you run and you run every morning, it instills that discipline. And that's what you need in your work. This is what you need in your vision. It's what you need to run with God. This is what's gonna make you attractive. Undisciplined people are not attractive when you get older. When you're younger, we don't care. But when you get older, discipline is attractive. Somebody who says, listen, look, that, and I'm not saying to the extreme, I'm talking about when you're, I'm, I'm not saying that every night at 9 o'clock I've got to go to bed and that's it. Like regardless of what you do, I say I'm going to bed at 9. No, that's what the Bible says, the letter of the law kills, but the spirit of the law, the law gives life. It's not about that, do you understand? Know it's about the fact that you know that you have, okay look, I know I have to do a certain amount of videos this time. Okay, I couldn't do 5 today because I had to help someone out. Not a problem. But my normal ratio would be 5. Do you know what I'm saying? But, okay, cool, I couldn't do it today because I have to help someone out. It doesn't mean I can't flow, but it just means that I'm regimented in set, and says I've got a set of standards I want to hear. Do you know what I'm saying? And maybe if I was prepared, which is the next point, when you're running, you prepare for running. You get your shoes on, you get your clothes on, the right things, attire to go for running. You prepare to run. When you prepare for your vision, your, your thing, you actually take into account maybe something might happen here, X, Y, or Z. This is also attractive. Somebody who's prepared for what may come. Do you get me? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Do you get me? Um, another thing is, um, you know, anim uh, we have an animal instinct in the sense of like what human beings are, and one of them is that we are attracted to the fittest male. When I say fittest, I'm not talking about looks. I'm talking about in terms of the person who will pass on the great, the best genes, right? And so, as a Christian, you're looking for somebody who's gonna also match you, your level of spirituality. You want the best person physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to be on your level. So when you see someone like that on that level, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, they become attractive to you because they are of a certain caliber. Do you get me? Hey, let me not talk too much. I don't want to talk too much, you get me? Um, so naturally, as, uh, spiritually, we're gonna look for people like that. That's what I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? Um, and the last one is obviously when you're running, um, 
uh, my last two things. When you're running, um, you have a I don't care attitude. Now, whether you've got a belly or a gut, or you know, you've got man boobs, whatever, or you're fat, let's be real, because I was fat kid, so I can tell you this truth. Um, the fact that you're running, you, you, at this, you know, when you start running, it's like, it's like you don't care anymore. You just start, once you go halfway through, I don't care what anyone thinks, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. That I don't care attitude was also attractive because people are attracted to people who are able to do what, regardless, of, like when people see me and I'm dancing, yeah, they're like, bro, why are you, every day you're dancing. I said, like, yeah, I love dancing. So it comes out. You love God, it should come out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm unashamed, unapologetic, unapologetic. Wow, the English is slowing, bruv. But basically, as the Bible says, you know, we're unashamed of the gospel. I'm unashamed of the things that I love. And that it becomes attractive to somebody because you're unashamed because there are things that people are ashamed of. Yeah? When people want when people see you being confident in public, they wish they could be public confident in public. When somebody sees that your relationship with God is tight, they wish they could be tight with God like that too. So when you're unashamed in what you're doing unapologetically, yeah, the person finds you attractive because we all got parts of us, yeah, and parts of our life we wish we could be unashamed in. Do you get me? Cool. Last point is this. Um, in order to run, yeah, you need to turn belief into faith. That basically means, okay, I'm going to run. That's your belief. But number two is actually I step outside the door and actually start running. So the most important thing about somebody who's a runner is that they don't just operate in the belief area, they operate in the faith area, which means they turn their, their, their acceptance of the truth into actual action. Actual action, yeah? And that action is trusting God and running with what God has told them to do. That is attractive. Why? Because if somebody else is a fellow Christian and they see the spirit of God working in you and you're working, and you know what? Fire, yeah, um, is attributed to God. Like God is a consuming fire. And I always say this as well, like, you know, the Bible says that he's a consuming fire and it resides in the Holy Spirit, in the, whole, in, the, in the temple of us, right? But it's like, when you're running at speed, it's like you're on fire. That's what we always say, like, with Christian, this guy's on fire, look at the way they're moving, they're on fire. When you're running at speed, it's like you're on fire. Do you understand? And when you run with that fire, yeah, people look because why? We naturally want to look at fire. It's like the naked flame that's dancing. We all look. Do you understand? It's attractive. And so in that same fashion, when someone's running with their vision at speed as a person, yeah, I'm a, I'm, and I set on fire, I become attractive. So what am I saying to you in the end? I'm saying, guys, as a Christian, to be an attractive Christian, you got to run with your vision. And you gotta run hard, yeah? And as you run hard, you create fire and you also create mystery. Because when Moses saw the, the burning bush, when you see somebody on fire, you're gonna ask, Lord, is that you? You're gonna ask, hey, this guy's a Christian, like, what's making him run this fast? You understand? So guys, listen, that's episode one. I hope I made sense, because I felt like it didn't make sense, then I made sense and I was not sure. But anyway, Listen, watch out for episode 2. Listen, like, share, subscribe. You already know what time it is. Little Black Book. Abuza.